Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. On the broadcast today, we have Cody Wagner, chairman of the Fernley Community Foundation, on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Mindham with Joey Whitaker. You have a great hotel here. Mike Pegerman's invested a ton of money into this place to make it just gorgeous. Tell people what they can expect when they come down and stay. A real quality experience, Sam, and the, the, the rooms you've stayed in them, they're good size, very well appointed, clean, and for about $65 Sunday through Thursday, right now through the winter, after you're done with your meetings, you take a nice, beautiful scenic drive and come stay in a very nice, beautiful room. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. Hi, welcome to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Robert Perea, filling in for the vacationing Sam Shad. And uh, today on the program, we have Cody Wagner, the chairman of the Fernley Community Foundation. So uh, let's start off, Cody. What, what is the Fernley Community Foundation? Yeah, thanks for having me on this morning, Robert. It's great to have a Fernley guy here who's, uh, who's hosting and kind of familiar <laughs> with the work we're doing. Um, <clears throat> back about four years ago, we uh, started a nonprofit. And the idea at that point was really working with the city of Fernley to create a new community center. Uh, be kind of the fundraising arm of that. As time's gone on, we've kind of progressed beyond just doing the community center. That's still our main um, vision, our main goal. But we've, uh, we've really gotten involved in the community, tried to advocate for our community, get people more involved. As you probably know, um, especially in today's day and age, I think a lot of people like complaining about things that aren't done uh, and not doing anything about it. So we're trying to take a role of, of really being involved, active in our community, um, raise some funds obviously, but beyond that, just make a better quality of life for, for people in Fernley. Uh, and we have a tremendous board of eight people um, who, who have been really with us since the start, uh, been, been an amazing help um, in doing everything that we're trying to do. When you talk about a community center, what kind of center are you talking about? Yeah, that's a good place to start. So um, I think when we first started this project, we certainly, um, we wanted to really touch lives of everyone in Fernley, all the way from, from kids to our seniors. Um, and the first part of the project was put together with the coordination with Lyon County and the city of Fernley uh, in a new senior center that uh, the county and the Pennington Foundation funded. Um, and that's already been constructed, um, been open for over a year now. Beautiful facility, um, right kind of in the middle of town, serves a lot of seniors. 
And so then the next phase uh, is, is figuring out what the rest of this looks like, um, where funding comes from. And we're lucky enough to be working with the city of Fernley who received a, a large portion of um, American Rescue Plan Act funds or ARPA funds. And um, the city council agreed to devote $12 million towards the project. So that's a huge start. We still have a ways to go. Um, we're working with a group that includes the Boys and Girls Club of Truckee Meadows. Uh, Mike Worm, the executive director, has been a huge help. City of Fernley is obviously kind of the lead on the project. They're the ones who brought in the majority of the funding. Um, Lyon County School District has been an involved part. And so um, the vision right now is definitely some youth activities, uh, Boys and Girls Club possibly. Um, and we're, we're kind of figuring out what the rest of that looks like, where funding comes from. Um, what the sustainability of the project looks like and things like that. Uh, I don't have an exact timeline, but um, it's progressing way faster than we thought it could possibly go when we started this effort four years ago. What kind of funding are you talking about? I mean, how much funding are you, are you looking at needing? Um, we're, we're going after everything that we can find. Uh, we've been very a active at the state level, um, talking to the treasurer's office about potential funding sources. Um, what our foundation's done is really started a grassroots effort. So uh, we just kicked off a membership program um, two weeks ago. And uh, that's really to build the continuous ongoing funding that the project's going to need. So um, we already have 10 business members, 20 individuals who have joined. Uh, a year and a half ago, Polaris has been a huge supporter of our project uh, on the corporate level. And uh, they gave us a $100,000 grant um, to be part of the project, which is uh, really, really neat. It's um, what we believe is the, the largest private um, grant to a nonprofit in Fernley's history. So we're really proud of that. Uh, Polaris has been an amazing supporter. Their uh, employees are actually uh, doing payroll deduction donations that are 100% matched by Polaris corporately to our foundation right now to support the project, too. Um, so that's kind of the grassroots part. We really need uh, to supplement that $12 million that the city's already invested with some additional funds. And obviously there's some private uh, foundations and things in the area that support projects like that. So we're putting together a strategy, a plan to um, really go after some of those dollars and uh, see what we can, we can construct. I really think the Boys and Girls Club is the center of it. But uh, we, we're advocating for some community space and things like that as well. So how much do you think it's going to take to build the thing? Um, I, I think we could build something with any budget, right? <laughs> Especially when you start with that $12 yeah. million. Um, so uh, it could be anywhere from 12 to $25 million. Mm -hmm. It really just um, depends how much, how much funding is available. And so... Uh, we're, it's kind of a work in progress, right? We, we have to be flexible, um, figure out what funds are available and go from there. So will the funding determine what you put into the building or will you choose what you're going to do with the building and then try to come up with the funding to yeah. do it that way? That's, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I think out of necessity that funding has to be there for, for something to be constructed, right? The way I think the project's going right now is that uh, we're designing uh, a scope of about $20 million. We'll see what funding's available and kind of adjust the scope from there. So okay. it takes a vision first to, to sell and write some of these grant applications and things like that with, and then adjust the scope from there. So what is a building in, in that regard? You know, what kind of amenities would it have, you know, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the frame that you're talking about? Um, as you probably know, construction costs are astronomically high right now. So we're very aware of that. Uh, it's just the reality of the situation that we have to deal with. Um, at the center of the project, I think, is a gymnasium. Um, right now, the only gyms in Fernley are really run by the schools. So uh, a gym that would serve kids during the day <clears throat> and uh, some community aspects after hours during the weekends, things like that. Uh, I dream. I, I mean, I've coached basketball for a lot of years in Fernley, as you know, um, dream of bringing uh, AAU tournaments to Fernley and, and promoting kind of the tourism aspects that way too. Uh, but I, again, the, the gym will be sized according to funding. So it starts there. 
Along with the gym, I talked about a boys and girls club. Um, I don't know an, an exact footprint of that, but we really hope the boys and girls club and, and the youth services will be part of that. Uh, a lot of people always complain about, you know, there's not enough to do for kids in Fernley. And for a lot of us, I think that's very true. So we're, we're trying to um, get kids involved uh, in the right things, right? Well, I think when when our youth don't have things to do, that's when trouble starts happening. We've seen the increase in crime rates and things like that as Fernley's grown. So we really believe this facility in a boys and girls club um, that that is really, uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Club already operates in Fernley. They're operating out of the schools. They do a fantastic job with the facilities they have. But a, a real home for this club could grow the program and really um, get our youth involved in the community, uh, caring and reduce some of the issues that we seem to have. And then beyond that, um, I know there's discussions with Lyon County School District um, a couple of other nonprofits. Uh, we really hope there's kind of some community event space, um, meeting space, outdoor venue, things like that. And then uh, one project we're going to be very proud of is um, with that grant that Polaris gave us. Uh, we're building Polaris Plaza right along Main Street, which is kind of the frontage of, of the whole property. It's right next to the historic depot um, down, well, on Main Street in Fernley. And uh, that's, that's going to be a project that I think our foundation really, really owns and takes ownership of, <clears throat> both short-term and long-term. Speaking of the depot, is that going to remain there as, the, as this other building is constructed? Yeah, I think uh, that's kind of the centerpiece of the project. Uh, it's uh, an old historic building. Um, we do dream of, of it being usable as, again, community space one day. And I think the city has shared that vision. Uh, it's probably a, a number of dollars away from that uh, right now, but the city has invested a lot of money into making that, that building usable. So uh, it's certainly a part of this, a part of the programming of the whole, we're calling it a campus. So you, mentioning the Boys and Girls Club that you, uh, it, it, at the, as part of the, pro, the project, um, Maybe a lot of people don't realize that the Boys and Girls Club in Fernley is actually a branch of the uh, Truckee Meadows Club. Um, yeah, and they, but it, like in, in Reno or uh, the club in Yarrington, they have their own facility. And in Fernley, you know, they're in classrooms or, or in the cafeteria of the schools. Yeah, you know, um, Boys and Girls Club of Truckee Meadows has done a lot of job, not just in Fernley. Uh, they operate out of Ely. Um, they help the Winnemucca Club. So they really fill in the gaps. And I know they're, they're getting involved in the Eureka area as well. Uh, fill in the gaps where there aren't services for youth in some of the rural communities. And we really appreciate that out of them. Um, obviously, they're a private nonprofit and have a budget they have to, to fit into. Uh, they do a tremendous job of fundraising and um, building relationships with, with many donors in the area, but uh, I completely, they, they are using what they can in Fernley right now and really um, doing what they can for their kids in the schools and doing an excellent job with the facilities they have. I think this project could bring them to the next level in Fernley and I think their executive director shares that vision with us of um, what this project could become. All right, well, we'll take a short break and we'll be right back here on Nevada Newsmakers. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only mm. casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. 
The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Alright, welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Robert Perea, and we're with Cody Wagner of the Fernley Community Foundation talking about their project to build a community center in Fernley. Uh, over, over the weekend, I attended a, a concert at the uh, Oates Park Center in Fallon. And now Fallon has a small performing arts theater. Yarrington has a small performing arts theater at the Jeannie Deeney Center. There's nowhere in Fernley for a band to play or a, a theater production or anything like that. Is this part of what you guys are, are looking at? Yeah, there's no doubt, you know, the um, arts and culture scene in Fernley um, is improving, I think. Uh, Damon Yulehorn, one of our, our board members, runs the ACES out there, the Arts and Culture Event Squad. They're doing a lot of great work, but again, venue-wise, it's tough. Uh, we, we've gone and looked at o Oats Park. Fallon has done just a tremendous job with their community facilities, everything from their, their new youth center to their... Uh, community gym to the Oats Park area and the performing arts. That's really where we're trying to get firmly to. Um, I can't say definitively one way or not. We're, we're certainly trying to push for some sort of stage. And, you know, a possibility with this project, really depending on how much funding is available initially, is that you could phase the project. And so maybe a performing arts venue might be like a phase two type mm -hmm. of, of facility. but. We, we certainly envision something, um, an outdoor event space is definitely possible and we're lucky enough here in Northern Nevada to have a lot of months of pretty good weather to do outdoor events too. And uh, well, our main fundraiser every year uh, in August is Firmstock, which is kind of a dinner and concert series and we bring in a stage which uh, was really, really neat last year. Um, I think it was speculated it's the biggest stage it's ever been in Fernley to do our concert. So it's a start, you know, bringing, bringing staging in, but we, we certainly want to build something permanent. Um, and, you know, it's something our schools could use too, plays, concerts, things like that. Uh, they're kind of doing out of their schools the best they can, but having an actually, actual venue would, would really be a huge improvement for Fernley. Well, let's talk about yourself a little bit. Uh, you know, how, how did you get involved in this project and, and what's the driving force behind you, you know, being, being so involved? Yeah, um, as you know, Robert, I grew up in Fernley. Uh, it was a great place to grow up. I mean, um, I think it was about 4,000 people, you know, as I, I went through elementary, uh, middle school, high school. By the time I hit high school, we, we started that growth spurt where we went from like 4,000 to 10,000. And um, I, I try not to take a side on growth. I know a lot of firmly people are either anti-growth or pro-growth. Uh, I think a reality with the way Fernley's position is some growth is going to happen and continue to happen. And so during this first wave of growth, uh, we grew the population, but we really didn't grow community amenities that much. And so um, there were, I think, two new schools built, new soccer fields, which is great. But uh, a community center was never really a, a reality at that point. And so it takes, I think, involved citizens like this. And, and that's something I even saw as a kid is that uh, my mom was really involved in our community trying to do things like this. And it, it really takes a, a full community. And so Fernley is anticipating another wave of growth, right, with uh, Trick and everything. Um, I know Mark IV has come in and, and already started construction in the, 
um, industrial area in Fernley. So as Fernley hits this another wave of growth, we think it's really, really important that we don't miss the opportunity again. Um, we, we just want firmly that, and especially our kids, to have a better quality of life. Uh, if I'm an outsider coming into the region right now, we talked about Fallon. I, if I'm looking at Fallon, if I'm looking at the Reno Sparks area, I'm looking at Carson City, I'm looking at Douglas, and then I look at Fernley, and I have a family, and I want to get their family involved, there's just not much that would um, motivate me to move to Fernley, I think, right now. And uh, that's a, an area where we can really make a difference. Um, I have a story. Uh, so again, coaching basketball. We used to open up one of the school gyms on Sundays for the kids to come in and play. And I really, if people want to talk about, you know, the youth and them not wanting to do anything and everything like that now. Um, we'd open just the gym up on Sundays and really do no uh, marketing or anything for it. We'd have 25 kids show up on Sundays just wanting some place to play basketball, you know. And uh, we were out of town one week coming back in and the kids wanted to play basketball so bad on that Sunday they actually broke into the school and were playing by themselves <laughs> when we got there. And so we had to have a talk with them and say, you know, you can't do this. But it, it just highlighted the obvious need that, um, and it's not just basketball. You know, there's, there's just so much that kids could do. You, you mentioned arts and culture already. Um, it, it just getting kids together and, and having them do something productive, I really believe our youth want to do that. Uh, and that's uh, a driver for me. I have two young kids now, two months and two and a half years. And so I certainly envision them growing up through this community center uh, in a better firmly than I grew up. Up in, and that's that's really the primary motivation for me. Well, doing a lot of good work in 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 Fernley, and for me, it's it's kind of cool to see a kid that I've known since you were in high school and and getting uh, into a position and being a leader in the community and doing some great things. So let's take a break. We'll be right back. Serving our kids foundation's mission is to serve homeless, at risk, and food insecure children in grades K through eight throughout Southern Nevada. During the pandemic. Serving Our Kids has seen a 42% increase in the number of children served, providing more than 4,500 meals to kids in over 100 schools weekly. Serving Our Kids is powered by community support and volunteers. To learn how you can help, visit servingourkids.org. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your furnace breaks down today, we fix it today. Why freeze for days while your furnace is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get warm again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 and we'll fix it today. That's 323-5585 or online at nevadaheating.com. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. Welcome back to Nevada Newsmakers. And I'm Robert Perea with Cody Wagner, the chairman of the Fernley Community Foundation. You've talked about the, the community center and what's next in the, in the steps of, of getting this going? You know, with our role, I think it's really to, to get the community more involved. And so like I, I mentioned, we've launched a membership program We've had some great business support so far. I, I highlighted Polaris already, um, Nevada Cement, 
Walmart, um, All Out, it's a local Fernley company owned by um, some guys I actually went to high school with. They've made tremendous contributions financially. Uh, we were really looking for other businesses to be involved. I know a lot of businesses are coming into Fernley right now. Um, we've run a brick program, kind of one of those, those typical programs. We're still in the process of making the bricks. We'll have them made when this community center is kind of ready to go. Um, but we've, we've sold somewhere between 50 and 75 bricks. Um, what we really need is, is community support. And so even if that's, you know, $5 a month or something like that, $10 a month is our, our beginning membership level. Um, whatever it is that you can give um, to this effort, if you believe in it, we, we really need the support. And especially business community. I, I don't know that our business community has ever rallied behind one specific project like this. They do a great job of giving to like our youth sports and uh, our Rotary Club does some amazing events they do, and giving back to our schools and things like that. There's never been a, a centralized effort like this in Fernley, I don't think. And so any businesses that want to be involved uh, will we'll get you involved in whatever way that you can be involved, um, whether that's volunteering, monetary donations, anything like that. Well, Cody, thank you for being on the show today. Cody Wagner, the chairman of the Fernley Community Foundation. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions. And all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority and it's ours too. Every day in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. I'm Robert Perea in for Sam Shad. You can check out Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.